Here I am, standing beside the remains of Colhorn House. Formerly a house of the Earl of Stair, until he moved to his newly built Lochinch Castle in 1867. Nothing much remains of Colhorn House today, but we do have a description for insurance purposes. The mansion house of Colhorn and offices are all built of brick and slated, all adjoining irregularly in walls and roofs and communicate internally except brew house and bake house, coach house, three stables and two lofts above the two of the stables formerly used as barns, now as granaries or lumber places. Standing in the ice house here, I know there's nothing much to see just now. What I'm going to do is just clean up a few bricks along the entrance here and let you see uh, what the entry looked like. Well, with that cleaned up, we can get a better idea of what it would look like above ground. Here you can see the entrance. And then I've put some pegs round to show you the semi-circular shape of the building. I made this reconstruction in Google SketchUp to show you how it would look above the ground, but really what was happening was the ice was stored underground. Blocks of ice would have been cut from Colhorn Loch and transported along this track road to the ice house. The first modern ice house appeared here in 1619. This was cylindrical, brick built, lined with straw for insulation and typically with a domed roof. This was engineered to conserve the ice for long periods of time. Indeed, an experiment was carried out in the early 1980s and it demonstrated that ice would easily keep for 12 months and more in an ice house. In 1660, Charles II commissioned an ice house in Upper St James's Park. With this, Charles could impress his guests by serving chilled drinks and ices even in the height of summer. The poet, Edmund Waller, was so impressed by this ice house that it inspired him to write this verse. Yonder the harvest of gold months laid up gives a fresh coolness to the royal cup. There ice like crystal, firm and never lost, tempers hot July with December's frost. Winter's dark prison, whence he cannot fly, though the warm spring his enemy draws nigh. Strange that extremes should thus preserve the snow, high in the Alps or in deep caves below. Ice became a major trade and fortunes were made from supplying it. It was imported from Norway and from the Americas. Here on this map we see the extent of the ice trade from New England. Amazingly, a ship full of ice would still have 50% of the cargo intact by the time it reached India. At the end of the 19th century, the invention of refrigeration spelled the demise of the ice house. Perishable goods could now be transported over long distances by rail. Eventually, the fridge as we now know it made its way into almost every household. So. Next time you have a walk around the gardens of a mansion or stately home, keep a look out for a little dome building. It's almost certain to be an ice house.